and I will call the others. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's good to see every one of you this morning. Um, it's a good thing to be alive at this time. Yeah. Today is the last day of the year, 2023. Glory to God. God has been faithful from the beginning till the end. He's been the Alpha and the East Omega. Hallelujah. And the end is an initiator, initiation to something, or rather giving space or giving opportunity for something new to happen. Because this world that we live in has a start and a finish. Amen to Jesus. So this year started and now it's finishing today. And it's ushering in another year. Praise the Lord. And we can be rest assured that this year is not like next year. Amen. I mean, a couple of hours we'll step into the new year. So the new year is not like this year. And please be rest assured also, the Bible says the path of the just shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. And I want to say to every one of you, you will never have a better last year. Amen. You understand that? You will never have a better last year. Because every year you encounter will be a plus. Amen. It will take you higher and higher. Amen. You will get better and better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So the path of the door shines brighter and what? Brighter. And brighter unto the perfect day. Tell your neighbor divine progression. Divine progression. Say divine progression. Divine progression. Hallelujah. Just like you never step into a river twice. Yeah. I hope you know that. You never step into a flowing river twice. Yes. Amen. Amen. Because the river is flowing. When you step in and step out, the portion you step on has flowed away. Yeah. And then you step in again. You always step into newness in the river. You never step into a river twice. So you never encounter the same year twice. Next year will be way better than this year. In the name of Jesus. I want us one more time to appreciate the Lord and thank Him again. Just give Him a Glory to Oh, we exalt you, we exalt you. We exalt you, we exalt you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you have done. We bless your holy name. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. You have been faithful.
Jesus' name. Amen. Right now, before we take our seat, we're still going to appreciate God for 2024. Like I told us, and I've been reiterating, I'll keep saying it, to condition your mind for you to know that God is not a haphazard God. God is a God of order. Before he does anything, he declares it. Amen to Jesus. He said in Isaiah chapter 46 verse 10, he said, the Lord declares the end from the beginning. And the things that have not yet happened from ancient time. Amen. He said, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient time. What is still to come? Saying that my purpose will stand. And I will do all that I please. Amen. And guess what God is pleased about? Amen. Amen. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. They are thoughts to give you an expected end. Now that's what God is thinking about you. So you're going to thank God for 2024. Because God already has, already has a plan for you in 2024. Amen. Amen. It's not what you're going to ask for or what you're going to know. He already has a plan for you. If you can key into it, you will see much more. Because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask for it. If you are asking God for a 10 by 5 picture, God is thinking by 1,000 and 200,000 pictures. Hallelujah. He's able to do much more. So you're going to thank Him for 2024. Say, Lord, I thank you for your plan for me in 2024. I thank you for your greatness. I thank you for your purpose. Can you go ahead and appreciate it one more time? Let's appreciate it for 2024. We are about to step into it. But let's give him the praise. Let's give him the praise. My God, we appreciate you. You are a God of order. You are a God of plans. You declare the end from the beginning. I will thank you, Jesus. Because you have great plans for us. Lord, in 2024, we appreciate you, O oh God. 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 We thank you for your great and precious presence. We thank you, O God, for your plan. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your plan. We thank you for your Oh, 
my God, my God, my God, my God. We have many tears and sorrows. We ask that to church for tomorrow. And there were times we didn't know the right from wrong. But in every situation, you give blessed consolation. In our trials, for we come to make us strong. Lord, through it all, through it all, we learn to trust you, Jesus. We learn to trust you, God. Oh, through it all, through it all, through it all. trust you. And we thank you because we never fail. Thank you for everything. Thank you for everything. And we also thank you for the year that you are about to enter. You are a God that never fails. You are already in the future even though we have not entered it yet. And we thank you because your plans will stand. Your purpose will stand. Your will will be done. And we thank you because you are keeping us into your will. None of us have been missing in the name of Jesus. We glorify your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. And the saints of God shall be there. Hallelujah. Before we take our seat, I want us to sing this song. Amen. Amen. It's still our celebration time, okay? So don't get tired. Amen, Amen. to Jesus. The song's a very simple one. I learned it years ago. It says, Oh, we are dancing, but we are clapping now. We are clapping in the light of the Remember the song? Yes. Oh, we are clapping now. We are clapping in the light of God. We are clapping, clapping, we are clapping. Oh, we are clapping in the light of God. Alright? We are clapping, clapping, we are clapping. Oh, we are clapping in the light of God. So let's sing the song. Alright, one more time. Oh,
so you will be awarded. Praise the Lord. But we just want to recognize some people in our midst, which is only fitting for us to do. Like the has said, they've been with us since about eight years now, about eight years. But this church actually started, if I let me give you a very brief history about the church, how we started. Is that okay? Yes. Yeah. many of you don't know. I came into this country in 2013. That's when I came in. And my sole purpose, like people used to say, we came to Dubai to look for money. I didn't come to look for money. Amen. When I came to Dubai, I was sent here to start a church. So my primary assignment is a church. It was not for money. Amen. I'm sorry, that's how many offend you myself. No. But that's that's my own uh, story. All right, I came in 2013. Before I came, of course, we we're preparing to come to Dubai. And then uh, my pastor, my initial plan, like he told me when I you know, joined the ministry, he asked me, where would you like to go uh, for ministry? I told him, actually, my ultimate aim is to go to the U.S. However, presently, I'd like to go to South Africa. That's what I told him. And I said, okay, let's pray about it. Uh, so he kept praying. God I impressed upon his heart. And then Dubai was open. He now came to me and said, What if Dubai is available? Would you be willing to go? I said, Well, I said, Why not? He said, Start. Because if God said something, He will take you through a process. All right, before you get there. I said, No problem, I'll go to Dubai. So Dubai was never in my plan or agenda. However, I accepted and then I uh, prayed about it. It took a while before my visa came out. In fact, it was almost as if it was not going to come. And so we, we bought tickets already, expecting the visa to come. Knowing that Dubai visa doesn't really take much time. But I wasn't coming with a tourist visa, I was coming with a resident visa. So we're waiting for the visa to come. It was the, the day that the ticket was to expire that my visa came out. <laughs> And as soon as it came out, immediately we gathered everything and then off we go. We landed here in Dubai 2013, March 19, to be precise, after I came to Dubai. And so I came with my pastor, my senior pastor, Pastor Andrew, for long sure. And then um, he told me that to study the land, it's a Muslim country, ministry is not run here, like it's run back home. Back in Nigeria, you can do ministry anywhere. You can preach anywhere, you can, you know. But here, you have, there's some restriction. In fact, as a matter of fact, 10 years down the line, a lot of things have changed in Dubai. Back then, it was still, they were still trying to be strict in a way. So he told me to study the land and see how I can um, fit in and then reach out and then start something. But, you know, the zeal was so much in me. As soon as he left, he spent one week and then he left me alone. I bought a house in Sharjah. And uh, ever since I've been living in Sharjah, I don't know. For some reason. 18 years now, I'm still in Sharjah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 10 years now, I'm still in Sharjah. Anyway, so I bought a house in Sharjah. I was living alone, a room to myself, as a missionary. I need space to pray. I'm not just saying <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I was staying alone. And then uh, praying and interceding and trusting God for the church to start. Now, he expected me to settle me in probably and you know, stay for some time, maybe a month, two, since I came to stay, not that I came to visit. So, I, I had all the time. And I had a resident visa. And I was being, I was giving some money anyway to, for upkeep for some time. So, I had some dollars with me and I was gradually taking out a bit of it. Yes. And you know how it is, whatever. The money that stays there and you don't have to be reducing and reducing. So, and I said, right, what do I do? I need to start this church on time. The way it's in me, if I don't start now, I might not start, I might not be able to start again. So I took some of the money from my upkeep, I printed bill for invitation. And then I started evangelizing. I'll go to Bera, that was the easiest part where you can save a lot of people, especially our brethren from Nigeria. So I began to preach. I got a hall, and the hall I got, they told me it was um, this lady loves to preach. She's not really a preacher, something. Amen. Amen to Jesus. She doesn't want to be restricted. <laughs> so I got a hall, and then uh, 
The whole payment at that time was 350 dirhams. And here I am, no support. The only money I had on me was my upkeep. But of course, I know how to work my faith. So I secured the hall. I was getting ready to pay. I already printed the bill with no address on it. The address was blank, so I used my hand to write the address when I get to home. Kept on preaching. There was one occasion while I was preaching, getting ready for the church to start. I met a pastor. And the pastor, I didn't know he was a pastor, I was just evangelizing. So he saw me, looked at me, he smiled and smiled. He now asked me, Do I know you? I said, No, I don't know you. <laughs> he now said, Oh, so what are you doing? I said, I'm evangelizing. He said, Oh, that's wonderful. He now introduced me as a pastor. I said, Okay, I'm also a pastor and I'm evangelizing. We are here to start a church. He said, Really? Ah? He said, You must be the one God told me about. He said, While he was praying, Previously during the week, that God told him to support a young church to help them pay for their rent for two weeks. I said, Okay. And long story short, he paid for two weeks. So the first two services, he paid for it. And for me, that was a sign that, all right, God wanted this church to start. And that's how we started. We started with eight people who had a family friend, and then she came with her, her three children. Was I said making four, and then I was able to get one or two persons at a, we ate in London that day. That was the first service. The following service, we were four. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> the first one was inauguration. The following service, we were four, and then on and on, kept going four, sometimes it's three, and I have to pay for rent 350 dirhams. That's almost a hundred dollars. <laughs> Praise the past service. And um, along the line, oh, my oldest member is not here today. They can choose to yeah. travel. He's been with me from, yeah. uh, say, let's say two months after that when he joined me. And since then, he's been with me. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. Just like he'll be with me all through too. Amen. Yeah. Amen to Jesus. Yeah. All right, so um, some months down the line, we began to have issues. We don't pay for rent. We don't pay for rent. Sometimes I'll call to the uh, stadium. How much do you have? The rest can help pay these people. There were times I would be owing the hotel. I tell the manager, please just, just give me some time. Just allow me this week. I will look for money and pay. And here I am. I'm paying for the what I'm owing. And I'm still going to have another service again. Where am I going to get money from? But I couldn't bear it anymore. And I said, all right, you know what? Let's have a break. <laughs> I mean, we were not. At the time, we were not meeting in the church because we had no money to do for the rent. We started meeting in Agure Center. How many of you know Agure Center? The food court there. That's where we meet for service. We'll sit down, get a bucket of KFC, at least we want to eat, right? And then we'll have a fellowship together. Sometimes about 10, sometimes 15 people will gather around the table. We we'll have a KFC, and now we preach in the world. <laughs> After preaching the world, we pray a little bit. Of course, you can't pray loud in the open space. And then we collect offering and we go. So we have to save the offering, gather it. Then along the line, I had this pastor, Filipino pastor, you know, where uh, I met my brethren here. Amen. Amen. So he now called me up and said, What are you doing? I said, Well, right now, we don't have money to pay rent. You know, we're meeting in the food court. And I said, how can you meet me? How can you be having church in the food court? He said, come and join me. He said, come and join me. Let's partner together. We'll collect two offerings, one for you, one for me. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> one for you, one for me. And then, um, you know, we'll alternate the preaching. You preach this week, I preach next week. I said, wow. I said, I've never heard that before. <laughs> this can never happen in Nigeria. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said, okay, let's give it a try. And then we did that. And we're alternating preaching. In fact, when we had our, our convention, our first, you know, second year convention, but we had the first one. Just after the first one, I think I joined conference. After our first convention, my pastor came with some entourage. We were about 27 for our convention. After that convention, two weeks after convention, the, the hall we're using for church closed. The, the office, I mean, the, the hotel closed and they were renovating 
for almost one year, couldn't go there. The second place, the same thing happened. And that's how we got stranded. Long story short, the second year convention, we had it together with our brethren, our Filipino brethren. Amen. And that's how we've been doing it. Then along the line, we're able to secure some fun, and then we started all over again and began to gather. And, um, well, the rest is history. Amen to Jesus. And here we are today. Ten years after, we are still doing it. Praise the Lord. Because whatever is planted, hallelujah. Whatever is planted, and I skipped some part of when, on two occasions, I actually was apprehended. Let me give you one of those stories, then I'll carry on with the message. <laughs> on one of these occasions, the first time I was leaving my house, coming to Dubai during the week in Sharjah, I was going to board the bus. Uh, a taxi, a sharing taxi, which was not actually recognized, you know, but people do it as a deal, and I wanted to get to buy fast. So I got there, waiting for my turn to enter the taxi, a man came, walked up to me, and then just apprehended, just held my hand. When he did that, I thought it was a CID. I was, I was frozen. Then later I now said, you are the one that stole my money. I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? He said, you took my money. I said, are you, what's going on with you? He said, I'm going to call the police. I said, you call the police. I said, call the police. And you know, of course, I had my, my, my document with me. Call the police. So the police came. The man spoke in Arabic and talked and talked and talked. He was a Syrian man, actually. And then I was like, I, was, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I was just waiting to give my own part of the story. The police officer said, what happened? I said, I don't know. I'm just standing here. This man walked up to me and said, I took his money and I don't even know what he's talking about. I've never seen him before in my life. Police starts saying, you know what, the way he's talking, let's just go to the police station and just simply there. Don't worry, nothing will happen, just let's go. And that's how I went. At the time, my wife was even pregnant from my mother, the first daughter, you know. And then, long story short, I went to the police station. I don't know what the guy told them. He kept on, he was really, really talking. The guy said, okay, let's take the case to CID. And that's how they transferred the case to CID in Shaka, and that's where I was. And I, <laughs> from that place, I didn't get to the house until after 14 days. I was put in the, in the cell <laughs> inside in Shaka for two weeks. I don't know what's going on here. You know? Then I realized in this country you are, you are convicted first before you are proven innocent. That means you are first guilty before you are proven innocent. So they keep you in there until they can prove that you are innocent. And that's where I was for two weeks. Then I turned that period to a period of um, fasting and praying. Praise the Lord. For me, it was a retreat. Because prior to that time too, I've been having some little headache about jobs. <laughs> I've been doing some agent work too. <laughs> so, <that time. laughs> so my phone was always buzzing. And uh, some jobs you give to people, it doesn't work. You get money from people, you try to give them jobs, and the job people run away with the money. And so while I was there, it was a time of retreat. My phone was not with me, I was not getting any call. I said, okay, good. And I was able to get my Bible, my wife brought the Bible. So I was studying the Bible while I was there and praying. And on the top, on the last day, or three days before I was released, I did, you know, dry fasting. Just praying and just studying the word. And then suddenly they called my name. I say, and the way you say, you just call your name. I say, yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I say, go. What happened? Tell me. They didn't even answer me. They didn't say anything. Just have to just go. I said, just like that. And that's why I left and came out. But meanwhile, the church was still on. Amen to Jesus. Amen. That's one of the story. Then the second one. Amen. Amen. Because uh, I don't want to say something here, but some people think the worst thing that can happen to them is to, is to. It's to go to prison, it's to go to jail. That's not the worst that can happen to you. The second one, I was on overstay for one year. I was pastoring a church. Hello? Hi. Yeah. They caught me in Banyas. How many of you know Banyas? <laughs> Have you been to Banyas before? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't worry, my message is very short. I'm just giving you this story so we can uh, rejoice together. For one year, I was on overstay, not deliberately, because I gave my passport as a shorty for someone who was in trouble. You know, and when I did that, the court, this was in Oma Queen, the court held my passport 
and did not release it. I was to renew my visa and I needed my passport to do that, but they refused to release my passport. And it didn't linger for after three months in the court. And I was already on overstay for three months. By the time I got my passport out to renew my visa, I paid for the renewal of visa, but then the overstay money was not. I didn't have money to pay for overstay. You know? So the money for visa went, couldn't pay for overstay, and then I held on. Then on this occasion, while I was busy doing a little business, waiting for somebody that I can take, depending on my business, I was selling perfume at the time, doing some you know, little uh, network marketing business. And I was there, and I was on suit, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I was on suit, waiting for this guy, and then, before I knew it, a man just woke up to me. Salaam alaikum. <laughs> and while I was trying to be glass around my neck, he showed me the ID. He said, uh, he said, ID. I said, ID. ID. Oh, God. It has happened today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> It has happened today, my God. I said, I don't have ID. He said, you have any ID? I said, I brought out my wallet. I was just feeling there's nothing there. I was just feeling. He said, okay, okay, no problem. Just, just follow me. And as I followed him, long story short, I was in night for like uh, four days or five days. From night, they took us to the court. They judged the case. And I also be reported in 10 days. Right. He took me to out jail, central jail, a wheel jail. That was where I was. And when I got to a wheel jail, it was <laughs> it was another community. The place was big, you have lots of people. And I was like, this country. I mean lots of people. This was the main session. We had five halls, all filled up with that. And when I got, I met some people doing fellowship. I said, oh, okay, we have church here, so let's continue the church. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. Yeah. So every day we were having Bible study. I was taking time to pray. Again, it was also a resting period for me because no calls and all that. So I can focus. I took time to pray. And this time I would look out through the window and see the road and find and say to myself, ah, yeah, I'm not going on this road anymore. I'm heading home. I said, no, it's not going to happen. I began to change my perception. I began to think. I began to talk. I actually was envisioning myself walking on the road of Dubai again, even though I already have a sentence to be deported. But I knew something would happen. Praise the Lord. But on the outside, my wife was busy doing a lot of stuff. Thank God for my wife. Amen. Please give her hands. Hallelujah. Brothers, pray for a resourceful woman. She's very resourceful. Yeah. So she was able to contact all my people back home. And my younger brother was, if I even that, I didn't even know my brother can bring out such amount of money. They charged us at that time 21,000 dinners. Is it 21, 25,000? About 25,000. Anyway, my brother brought about 21, almost 21,000. So we got this guy who was supposed to help me bring me out, do my visa, and then, well, he succeeded in getting me out. I came out. And then I was supposed to have my visa, which he didn't do. At the end of the day, the guy blocked me. Yeah. And then I was still on my stay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, but the church was still on. Amen to Jesus. Because, you know, whatever God is in, must continue. Praise the Lord. Well, long story short, they declared amnesty. And that was my deliverance. And when I went for the amnesty, I had six months stay. And during that six months, I got a job. That gave me three years visa. So, okay. Wow. Okay, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm saying all of this just to let you know that uh, you may not know what people have gone through. You just look at them and say, ah, you guys are. Ah, you guys are. But you don't know the story behind it. Listen, there's every story behind every glory. Amen? There's a story behind the glory. So if you see anything who is shining and all that, check out the story behind it. Don't just look at people at face value and say you want to be like them. Now, to be like them means you want, you want to be like everything they go through. Amen? If you want to be like somebody, that means everything that person has gone through, that good or bad, 
it will come to you also. So don't pray to be like someone else. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody have their uniqueness. And God will deal with you uniquely. Mm -hmm. But you see, through it all, God has been faithful. Yeah. Amen. God has been faithful. And I want to let you know that he will never change. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right. Amen. All right. Very briefly, before we start our program of giving the award, let's turn the Bible to the book of um, Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. Somebody check me out and read the street, verse 8, 9, and 10. Isaiah 55. Mm. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. He said, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not what? Return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereunto I sent it. Praise God. This morning, very briefly, I want to talk about the unique characteristics of God's word. Amen. If you have a topic, you can equally just show it out. Let's see it. The unique characteristics of the word of God. It's just one characteristic I want to talk about concerning God's word. And I want us to really give attention to it. Praise the Lord. How many of you love God? You love God? Praise God. And that's I love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. That is the great commandment that God has given to us. Because when you love God, his love will overpower you. And one of the rebuke Jesus gave the Ephesians church in the book of Revelation chapter 2, he said to them, you have left your first love. God wants us to walk in love, to walk in his love and to do everything based on the love we have for him. Alright, so I'm talking about the word of God. The word of God is full of life. The word of God has the ability to reproduce itself. Like we read in Isaiah 55. It said, as the rain comes down from heaven, and the snow, and water the earth, and does not return, but it water the earth, and cause it to bring forth and to bore, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. It says, so shall my word be that proceed out of my mouth, it will not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the things which, which I sent it. When the word of God enters into your life, this is what it will do for you. Amen? When the word of God enters into your life, it will not return to God's word, but it will prosper in the thing where it is sent. That means it will bear fruit. It will produce fruit. And I want to talk about how the word produces fruit in our life. So that we can appreciate God's word and learn to value it. Because if you give value to the word of God, then you will draw virtue from it. Whatever you, your sense of value determines your flow of virtue. Like the Bible told us, we all know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. She touched the hem of Jesus' garment, and the Bible says, virtue came out of the garment and then healed her. Now, she placed value on the garment of Jesus by touching and power came to her. If you place value on the things of God, you will draw virtue from it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Place value on the word of God. So the word of God will not return to God's void. And the word of God is everything we need. The word of God is what you and I need to overcome in this evil world. The word of God is what we need to 
overcome the activities of the devil in this world. Satan has an ultimate plan to destroy humanity. That's his plan. The fifth comment, not to, but for to steal, to kill, and to do what? That is the mission of the enemy. Everything he wants to do is to bring about destruction to mankind. Because Satan hates God. And he also hates man. Because man is created in the image of God. Each time Satan sees man, what he's seeing is God. He's seeing the image of God and he wants to destroy God's image. But you see, the word of God is what you need to put the devil where he belongs. So I'm trying to help you see the importance of having God's word in your life in terms of studying, in terms of listening and placing value on it. Many people don't realize that when you don't have the word of God functioning in you, you are doing yourself a disservice. You cannot stand against the enemy if you don't have God's word in you. Hallelujah. Satan is a master deceiver. Listen to me. If you find yourself as a believer walking in depression and in lack or rather in doubt, it is because you are walking in deception. If you are connected to God and you know what the word of God has said concerning you, you can never walk in doubt or walk in depression. But you see, that's what the enemy is using to put people down. He, instead of you seeing and focusing on what God and focusing on what God has said, you are focusing on the things that are happening. Let me say this again to us so you can understand. This world we are living in is not real. That may sound like foolishness, but hear me and hear me well. This world we are living in is a simulation. I've said it before. It's not real. This is not the real world or the real life. The real life is in the spirit. And that's where you and I is going. Hello? That's where we're going. The real life is where? <laughs> this is a dimension. In fact, it's the lowest dimension of creation. It's a higher dimension. The realm of God and the realm of spirits. And you and I are meant to function in that realm effectively if we're going to overcome in this world. So what we see in this world is subject to change. Hello? So anything that is subject to change means it's not real. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Whatever is subject to change is not what? It's not real. Because if it is real, it will not change. So God is a spirit that cannot change, so God is real. Hello? The word of God is a spirit that cannot lie, that cannot fail, so the word of God is real. It cannot change. It is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for the word of God to go unfulfilled. Because the word of God is real. Hello, somebody. So, when you have the word of God in you, you are connecting and working with the reality that exists. So the word of God can tell you that you are well. Now if it's up to you to believe it, if you can muster the courage, stupidly to believe the word, eventually that word will become a reality in your life. It will change your present condition. May God give us understanding in Jesus' name. Because if you don't know this thing, Satan will use what you can see to distract you. He will use what you are feeling right now to push you off and knock you off your focal point and knock you off balance. And before you know it, life will begin to hit from different angles. Miracles happen when we see beyond the natural. Miracles happen when we see beyond the present condition. The Bible told us clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. He said, while we look not at the things which are seen, for the things which we see, they are what? They are temporal. That's 18. And the things which we do not see, they are what? Now, what we do not see is the real thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? What we see now is temporal, meaning it is not real. Oh. Let me tell you about that thing. That I'm going through is not real. Oh Jesus. 
Can you accept it? Somebody is saying, Pastor, you don't understand. This one I'm feeling right now in my leg. In my body. <laughs> Amen to Jesus. If you can look beyond that. So why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For what we see is temporal. That pain is temporal. That condition is what? Temporal. Tell yourself it's temporal. It's temporal. Oh my God. Tell yourself it's temporal. it's temporal. One more time. Say it is temporal. temporal. Is that what we look at now? In order for the temporal to change, you must change your focus. Shift your focus from what you see that is temporal and focus on what is real, the word of God. Focus on what God has said, the spirit. Amen. Amen. If you can muster the courage to do so, you begin to see manifestation of God's word in your life. That is why a man of faith to the natural is foolishness. The Bible says the things of the spirit is foolishness to the natural man. They cannot understand it. First Corinthians chapter 2. Alright, so the things of the spirit are foolishness to the natural man. He cannot understand it. Please, let's go there. Please. Second Corinthians, first Corinthians 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, and uh, that's the verse 11, 12, thereabout. First Corinthians 2. Amen. He said, put, but God has revealed, alright? 12, go to verse 12. He said, now we have not received the spirit which is of the world, but, but which is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us. That's the thing. He said, but the natural man does not receive the things of what? In order to receive the things of the spirit of God, you must stop thinking on natural things. Hallelujah. Amen. You must stop thinking like a natural man. He said, why? Because they are foolishness to him. You cannot reason out a spirit. Hello? You can't. That is why people, some people discredit the fact that, you know, God, that God is not real. Why? Because they cannot prove God. They cannot feel Him. They cannot touch Him. The senses cannot touch God. They are foolish. So, nor can He know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So stop thinking of natural terms. So now what the word of God does to us is this. It produces what we call systems. And system is actually organized to bring about what we call continuity. If something is going to continue, it must work through a system. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word of God produces system in our lives. He said in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. And I'm getting ready to round up now. Hebrews chapter 1. He said, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty of God. He upholded all things by the word of his power. My God. He upholded all things. When God said in the beginning, let there be, that word produced a system that made the things be and then the thing to also continue to be. Let there be light. And then light came. And the light never stopped to shine. Hallelujah. Amen. Let there be this. And it appeared and it never stopped. Why? Because the word of God produces system. And the system ensures continuity. So when the word of God comes to you, it produces a system in your life that will guarantee continuity of what's that, what, what, what is sent for. If God tells you you are healed and you receive the word, it produces a system of healing in your life that ensures that healing continues in your life. If God says you are blessed, it produces a system of blessing that Cause the blessing to continue to manifest in your life. Now that's one of the unique characteristics of God's word. And that is why you must place value on the word of God. Jesus said in Matthew 4, verse 4, as I round up now, He said, After Satan tempted him, He said, Son of God, command this to the palm bread. 
But Jesus said it is written. Somebody say it is written. Yes. Say it is written. Yes. The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So every word God speaks to you produces a system in your life that guarantees the manifestation. And guess what? God's word, no devil in hell can come against it. He is the one that opens a door and no man can shut. He has the final say. He is the highest authority. If there's anything Satan cannot stand against is God's word. He can't. So if you have the word of God in you, declare it. It will silence every voice of the enemy over your life. Let the word of God speak. Let the word of God fill you up. Be a student of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Bible says in Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor seated, nor standeth in the ways of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Say, but his delight. Somebody say, his delight. Is in the law of the Lord. And in it he meditates day and night. What will happen to him? He said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall what? So even in times of famine, he will prosper. In the time of difficulty, he will thrive. Why? The word of God cannot die. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So engage more in the world. As a believer, you need the word of God in your life. You must, you must create a system of studying God's word personally. Don't only wait until you have a general time like this and you can open the scriptures and read. No. You are doing yourself more harm than good. Take out time deliberately every day. At least you read one chapter. I'm advocating that. One chapter every day. And feed yourself, feed your spirit man with the word of God. Praise the Lord. Because if you don't do that, you are setting yourself up for Satan's manipulation. Amen to Jesus. Amen. Don't let the devil play with your mind. The Bible says our transformation comes as we have the word of God in us. Romans 12 verse 2 says, And be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen. Stop thinking the way you used to think. Think differently. Change your thoughts because your life is actually organized and structured according to God's will. And the word of God reveals that will to you. Amen. Amen. So God's word produces system. Let it produce system in your life. Amen. You will not be frustrated in Jesus' name. Amen. Because as we step into this new year, I want to tell us emphatically that the enemy is actually on the move. There will be more battles. It, it will not reduce, you know? Because the Bible says darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. So Satan is not relenting. This we are in the last battle. And he has organized his arsenal going en masse full force to attack believers and attack the world. But you, with the word of God, will put the devil where he belongs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemies and nothing and nothing shall what? Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Hallelujah. So I encourage you to engage in the word of God. As we move into the new year, make plan to study. Amen? Amen. Make plan to enrich your soul and then God's word will come to you expressly and produce for you what he talks about. Hallelujah. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Alright. Now we'll be going into the awards session. Amen.